you are about to take another green energy adventure with me, Jay Nygaard, the Turbine Guy. Hello. Today we are on the beautiful shores of Lake Minnetonka in Orono, Minnesota on a day right after we had about eight inches of snow last night. Today what I'm here to talk about are vertical axis wind turbines by Hivot Technology Corporation from Taiwan. And I just happen to have three of those on my house. As you can see, I've got one here, one here, and one up on top of the house. And these are all 24 volt turbines that charge a battery bank in the basement combined with three solar modules that run a small part of my house off the grid. So today we're going to take a close look at this 300, how it's put together, how it works, and how to install it. Okay, now we're here to look at one of these 300 watt units close up. I've got it mounted on top of a Schedule 40 plumbing pipe that I galvanized. You can see it's about 12, 13 feet up. It goes another three, four feet in the ground. And basically we dug a hole, mixed some cement, poured it in, stuck the pipe in and leveled it out. Very simple install. You do have to worry about the wires coming down. They come out the bottom and uh, are buried up to the house with the other wires. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it connects in, in a few minutes. The important thing I want to point out right now is that it's still got snow on it from the storm last night and it doesn't really affect it. There's not a lot of wind, so it's not spinning fast. But as soon as the wind picks up, that snow is gone and it'll work. It works through blizzards, freezing rain, anything you got, these turbines are there. Now another thing I did just for fun is I repurposed my pole as a flag pole as well. So I've got an American flag up there with a solar light. It's of course got all kinds of snow on it right now. But that light helps light up the turbine and the flag at night. Okay, we are up at the house looking at the turbine on the house and we can see how it's mounted with three lag bolts into three mounting areas and those mounting areas are all lag bolted into studs as well as the lag bolts in the pole that are holding it there go all the way through a stud in the house as well so it's very securely attached. The only issue I have is that I mounted it too low. I need to get another three to four feet out of this turbine height wise to get it out of the turbulent wind area when the wind is coming this way off the lake and, and going north it bounces off the house and up and over and I need to clear that turbulent area. So that's something you always want to consider when you're putting one of these up is you need to get it high enough or far enough away from edges in order to be able to succeed. What happens now It'll work, and this thing works fairly well up there, but I get vibrations and such into the house, which I wouldn't be getting there if it wasn't a turbulent area. Okay, time for a close-up look at our wind turbine. Now, this wind turbine has two different type of blade systems. It's got the inner cans that are Savonius blades and the outer fins that are Darius blades. And what happens is these inner cans are a self-start mechanism. They get the turbine going when there's really low, little to no wind. Typical Darius blade turbines need a big gust of wind or some good wind to get them going. This will start. So as soon as you hit producing speed, these outer blades can then produce the energy. Now they're made and formed like airplane wings. They're thick on the outside, nice and smooth, and come to a point on the inside. Now, these operate on the principle of lift, and with the wind going sideways, it pushes over here, and that's how it makes the electricity, or the energy. Now, where is the energy made? The energy is made in the three-phase permanent magnet generator, which is what this is. Basically, you've got magnets on either side with windings in the middle. Very tight clearances in there, I'll tell you that. But something not to be fooled about when you're buying a generator especially a PMG, is the larger the generator, the more electricity it can make. It's a physical limitation to all generators. The bigger they are, the more they can make. Now last but not least, we've got the ground wire, and you need to make sure that we strap this ground from here to here because there's a rubber vibration isolation system in here 
And I'm going to pull it out in a sec so we can just look, look at the cover for it. But it basically really reduces the shimmy on these. And you can almost never feel anything coming down the pole whenever these things are spinning. So I'll take it off now so we can take a look. Now when you think about these turbines being three to three and a half feet tall and weighing 65 pounds, a lot of the weight and the height, six inches right here, is due to the vibration isolation system. This system is engineered rubber that is mounted in there that attenuates the natural frequencies and vibrations that would come down this turbine and otherwise make noise or, or, or make other issues. These things have very little vibration, very little shake, rattle, and roll. They just typically spin nice and smooth. Okay, we are now in the heart and soul of this off-grid hybrid renewable energy system. And we are at the electric control panel slash battery bank area. And we're going to start out with where the power comes in. We've got all three wind turbines coming in separately, and they each have their own disconnect. Uphill, downhill, and house disconnect. And as you remember, the one turbine was shut off on the house, so this one's off, these two are on. What happens when the turbine is shut off is it crosses all three phases. When you do that with a permanent magnet generator crossing those phases, it electronically shuts the turbine down. So we've got the power going in and coming out and it comes down here and where does the power go to? Three separate charge controllers. Uphill lakeside, the house, and the downhill lakeside. And what these charge controllers do is they take the input from the wind turbine, three phase, wild AC like we said because it's a varying voltage and we've got the steady DC voltage of a solar module up there for each one. And it takes that DC and AC and converts it all to an output of either 12 or 24 volts DC with a negative and a positive going to the separate buses. Now the nice thing about these charge controllers is they're triple weather protected, which means that triple moisture protected, they can go anywhere and they can stay outside and it's no big deal. Another nice thing, which you won't be able to see when I hit the button, is you. this will tell you what the battery bank voltage is. This will tell you what the turbine power is. This will tell you all kinds of fun stuff. I've got it in the running mode now. So it monitors what's going on, and it also tell you, tells you lifetime production. Two very important issues. Now once the power comes in from both sources, and this is ready to charge, it goes down to my bus bars. We have a negative bus bar and a positive bus bar. As you can see, I'm expanding this one. I've got to put a new one here because I want to add a few more batteries to my bank. So I, so I have a longer uh, life and run when the power does go out. So all the batteries come in this way. The power goes in this way, as well as out comes the inverter power. But let's get to the battery bank first. My battery banks about 1500 amp hours, mostly gel cells. These gray ones are gel cells. The, these are 45 amp hour battery ba uh, batteries. These are 42 amp hour batteries, and they're AGMs. Now down on the bottom, we've got 100 amp hour gel cells just like these. Now how you get a 24 volt is you connect a negative to a positive on one, you run the positive off this side, the negative off this side, you have 12 plus 12 equals 24. And it's a lot, the higher voltage you can run a battery bank, usually the better because then you end up running less current. So once the batteries are all done, charged up and sending power through the bus bar, they go up through the inverters. And we've got a 120 volt, 60 hertz inverter and a 240. 60 hertz inverter. I don't really have much use for this right now, but this one, uh, I've got a few different things hooked up to it, but the most importantly is my sump pump. 
when the power goes out around here I can run my sump pump and it can run all night long and you might not think that's important but we had three storms last year where if I did not have this setup running my sump pump my basement would have been flooded three separate times so this is very important very very important now last but not least what I want to focus on at the end is the Genius Charge Controller. For days like today where even though we had sun, although we had a foot of snow on top of the solar modules, and we didn't really have wind and we've been draining the batteries, when the batteries do get down to a certain point, the charge controller, which is plugged into the grid, will charge your batteries up and make sure your battery bank's maintained in full. And that's very, very important because if the power ever does go out, you always want to make sure that you start out with a nice, fully charged battery bank ready to go. Well, folks, to sum up for today, we looked at a small off-grid system powered by both the wind and the sun. It's got three solar modules of varying sizes on the roof, which... As you can see today, it'd be kind of hard to go look at with all the snow we've had recently. But we also have 300 watt wind turbines that contribute as well. And these are able to power part of my house in an emergency, such as run my refrigerator or run my fireplace if it's the winter. So it's very important, especially in some places like here, because we get so much water in the basement, I got to have something running that sump when the power's out. And that's the most important thing that we run. Several times the power has gone out this year that my basement has not flooded because of this small off-grid system. So these things do have their place. They do work. And as you can see, the things look nice and fit into a residential community. Thanks for coming. Well, thanks for joining us once again for a green energy adventure with me, the Turbine Guy. And if you have any questions for me or you want to contact me about something, you can always find me at my website, gogreenenergyonline.com, gogreenenergyonline.com, and find my email address on the contact page.